Privyet, Casey Hill, what's up, yo? This is your boy, the professor, and uh, we're doing something here on, um, I guess I would call this Revolver. It's going to be our, our political kind of collection of ideas and stories and news topics, and um, I am joined by the one and only the lovely Warrior Queen. How are you, Warrior Queen? Say hello, Warrior Queen. Hello, Warrior Queen. <laughs> so ridiculous. You're so ridiculous. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the top news stories. And you've kind of been going through the week collecting them. I have. And, and, and we're going to do hot takes. What do you think about that? Some hot That's takes. Great. So what do you got up first? Okay, well, you asked me to uh, write down two news stories per day. Two, that's um, true. So Tuesday through Friday, what I did is I just kind of jotted down some brief notes. Do you want to go through all eight? Like, do you want me to list them now? No, just go, just, just go. Okay. Just pick one. First person that we want to talk about, the first story, is um, Otto Warmbier. And who is he? Um, he was an Ohio college student um, who went to the University of Virginia, uh, 22 years old, and he had been detained, arrested, um, by the North Koreans since January of 2016. They recently released him to his parents, um, and they found out, his parents did, that he had been in a coma for more than a year over in North Korea, and sadly, he uh, passed away a few days ago. So, um, obviously, his parents are very distraught. They're happy that he's back on American soil, and so that but they're able dead. to bury him. But he's but dead. But he's dead. He's dead. Um, First of all, Otto, uh, what he did is he decided that he was going to leave his hotel and tear down a propaganda poster. Right. Why in the hell would you do that in North Korea? Well... Why would you do that? My first why, question... First of all, why are you in North Korea? Right. That's the first question. Apparently, um, there was some sort of a tour group that... Um, <laughs> of what? Concentration camps? A tour group of which what? I, I agree. Slavery? Crazy, crazy. Um, and so he was on the final leg of this tour of Asia. Um, and so he was going to be coming home. Would you go to North after. Korea? Never. I would go never. to Russia. I would never go to North Korea. I would, I would never, never go to Iran. Um, I would never go to Afghanistan. I want to go to Pakistan. Never go to just Pakistan. Kick it. Just kick um, like, what? You know no good's going to happen. Yeah, never go to Cuba. So, so Otto tore down a propaganda poster, right. and he and why would you do you know you have no idea where right. you're at? Like, what's wrong with this kid? And and I agree with you. I, I think first off, you should never go there. Secondly, if you are there, stay with your tour group. Um, don't do anything that you know is going to draw undue attention to yourself, which over there is pretty much anything. Um, you got round eyes. Right, right. That being said, is that deserving of death? No, of course no, not, it's but, not, but it, it's places not. aren't free like, right. like we are. exactly. And so um, he was sentenced to 15 years hard labor, and so um, the autopsy showed that he had been tortured, but of course they don't know exactly how because there were no broken bones, and since he'd been in a coma for a year, any bruises that there would have been on his body were long gone, but the doctor said that he had massive amounts of brain tissue loss. How do you lose your brain tissue? Um, well, Meningitis? Presumably, you would lose it because you've been starved. Hmm. Um, and because your body will eventually just kind of turn on itself. Hmm. So that's my guess, is that there was uh, starvation involved. Because let's face it, the people of North Korea are are starving as well. So they're certainly not going to feed their prisoners. You look really nice tonight. Thank you. Do you stand up? I don't know if we'll be able to see this at all. But you're like in a skirt. Yeah, I guess you not. You can't you see very it. very nice tonight. You can't see the skirt. Yes. My... Anyways. It's probably a bad segue where you start talking you about sex tapes. Where you start saying you're going to sexually harass me Maybe. and then I tell you I'm your wife so it's yes, not sexual harassment. Yes, I can get away with it. Okay, <clears throat> right. story number two. Okay. Story number two. This week, the Trump administration announced that... Um, yes, I agree. I agree that they are going to be doing an overhaul of government technology systems. Good luck. This is long, yeah, good luck, long dude. overdue. Okay, first off, there are agencies within the federal government that are still using floppy disks. Um, so messed up. 50 year old computer technology in some of the, administ or, uh, some of the agencies. The VA 
has um, more than 560 different forms online that are inaccessible by 90% of the internet browsers. You can get Braille. You have to do it all in Braille, um, race. They mm -hmm. still have a system where their claims are processed on paper. Yes. Um, side note, when I used to work for an insurance company out here, um, we processed Department of Defense claims, Bureau of Indian Affairs claims, and um, VA claims. And the VA claims were terrible, just awful. That's a little side note. But one of the most laughable things, I mean, floppy disks, that's laughable. 50-year-old uh, technology, that's laughable. But there are entire agencies that still have to fill out forms on how they're going to prepare for Y2K. And that was 17 years ago. Yeah, that's why the government sucks. Right. Okay, move yeah. on. Next story. That Excuse one me, I had to drink some iced tea. That one did not interest me at all. What else we got here? Hey, listen, they can't all be winners. Yes, yes, okay. they can be. All we'll right. get there. Okay. We're going to make the sex tape. Um, we're not making a sex tape. Hey, we're in. What what hey, hotel are we in? Hey, um, we're actually in the lobby. This side of it is not the Hotel Palomar, but the other side is the Hotel. Yeah, Palomar. we're at Cityscape. Right, Cityscape. Vladimir, KGB, Google it. Cityscape. You'll love it down here. Phoenix is waiting for you, bra. This is you a bring very, all your very KGB nice, friends. Very nice part of Phoenix. We'll party. Okay, so um, story number three. Uh huh. Since Donald Trump was sworn in on January twentieth, there have been five special elections because as and we you won know, them all. Hey, 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 hey! Don't steal my thunder. We won them Just, all. Should I put duct tape on your mouth? Maybe. Okay, listen. That's part of the sex tape. No. Um, oh, where's my hand? We couldn't know, do this in regular hand? news. Oh, where's my hand? Um, I don't. So, in any case, as you're aware, but maybe some of Let's talk our about viewers are not aware, when Donald Trump became president, he had to fill different slots in his administration. With uh, coin slots? No. So Slot he machines. has selected certain uh, U.S. representatives or senators mm -hmm. to serve in his mm -hmm. cabinet. Mm -hmm. So that means that their old spot is open, mm -hmm. and thus a special election had to take place in order to fill mm -hmm. their spot. So there have been five of those this year. The Republicans have won all five. And the Democrats have been pouring money left and right, hand over fist, into these elections because they are convinced that this is a referendum on Donald Trump and that somehow they're going to win one of these elections and be able to show people how unpopular he is. And while he's unpopular with the liberal elites and the Hollywood class, when it comes to... You think to Jesse Canales is going to break up the Hollywood elites? Okay. We shouldn't mention anything or anyone that is associated with... Okay, my you know bad. What I'm saying? Let's go back in time. Right. Let's rewind. Let's yes, rewind. No, you'll never hear um, that again. In any case, the Hollywood elites hate Donald Trump. But the average Joe, uh, Joe Main Street, we'll call him, loves Donald John Q. Public. John Q. Public, yes. Joe Main Street, they love Joe him. Main Street? You just make that up? No, I didn't just... Listen, I'm not in the habit of just making things up. Mm -hmm. I, I put things out there that are true mm -hmm. and well-known. Mm -hmm. it, it's an adage. Look it mm -hmm. up. So in any case, we've won all five. We being the GOP as opposed to the Democrats. Mm -hmm. So... That's let's, story three. let's do one. We're not going to have time for all of our That's stories. That's why I asked you yeah. if you wanted me to just tick them all off. Let's uh, let's talk about um, Loretta Loretta Lynch. Okay. I think this one's important. So the Senate Judiciary Committee, on a bipartisan basis, mind you. Okay. So not just Republicans, but Democrats also. Um, Diane Feinstein of note because she is the senior senator from California. Um, they are probing, they're not calling it an investigation at this point, they're calling it a probe. They're going to probe Loretta Lynch's behavior during the 2016 election. <laughs> I'm going to probe your behavior. Which is not good for her because they are looking into her involvement in the DNC activities and how this related to the Hillary Clinton um, server scandal and all of the emails that were hacked. They're looking into Loretta Lynch's behavior in that regard. And and I would just say, when you are a Democrat like Loretta Lynch and Dianne Feinstein 
a well-known Democrat is against you and she says that your behavior, Loretta Lynch, makes her queasy, that's not a good thing. Well, the big, I think the bigger thing for our audience is you are hearing Democrats say, let's step off this Russia thing. This is getting yes. ridiculous. Yes. Uh, there is no proof. We need to move on to this because we are getting our butts handed to us by the Republicans because we have we have no message. We have no messenger. Right. We have no counterpoints. We have nothing for tax reform. We have nothing for for improving Obamacare. We have none of this stuff, and we're getting killed everywhere. And I think that's that is. That, I think this is going to be a great thing because the narrative in Washington D.C. will now switch from Trump and the Russians to what the real issue is, is, boy, oh boy, there was massive cover-ups going on underneath Obama, who was probably yeah. the crookedest president we've ever had in our history. Well, um, I don't know if he was the most crooked oh, in our he was. history, because he was. I'm not um, old enough to know about our history, but in our I lifetime, know. for sure. I know. Um, and the Democrats, you know, honest ones, are actually saying, okay, is there is there any doubt that there was some sort of Russian involvement as far as they didn't want Hillary elected? Yeah, I don't think anybody doubts that. The, the doubt is, was there actual collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russian government? And no, there was no collusion. There's absolutely zero proof that Donald Trump colluded with the Russian government. As a matter of fact, um, Many members of the intelligence community that served under Barack Obama said, well, we knew that they were trying to, you know, meddle in the uh, election, but they did not, in fact, change a single vote. Well, okay. We already knew that. And so, as far as meddling in elections, do you remember Barack Obama meddling in the Israeli elections? Of course. He was, he he, was constantly he, telling he the Israeli He sent people, people over yep. there to subvert Right. To try to go Netanyahu. against Netanyahu. Right. And so this is not something um, that that is isolated to Russia. Russia is not the only government that tries to influence elections What's up, Russia? To, um, to further their cause. Yeah. Lots of other yeah. governments do the same thing. So um, the, the whole issue is that Donald Trump did not collude with them. He wasn't in league with Vladimir Putin to uh, throw this election to him. So. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Those are some good news stories, and this is going to be probably a weekly thing that we do where we kind of just encapsulate the top news stories, of okay. the, at least what I think are the top news stories. Right. What we're also going to have to do is get you under control because yeah, your interrupting yeah. behavior is rude and boorish, oh. and so we're going to have to get that under control so this can be orderly. It's, you say rude and boorish. Organized. I, I say uh, charming and witty. Right. Interrupting is not charming. It's neither charming nor witty. It's, it is both. No, no. Hey, let's watch videos about uh, bears in Siberia. How does that fit in with politics? 